Now, an iconic mural of the Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Dutu in the, Ca in the Cape Town CBD has been defaced with derogatory slogans. The destruction has caused outrage but has also shed light on the problem of racism in the country and the work that still has to be done to address it. Let's now speak to the acting chairperson of the Archbishop Desmond Tutu Trust, uh, Dr. Mampele Rampele. Dr. Rampele, uh, thanks for making time. This defacing of the Archbishop's mural, I imagine, is not only offensive to him, uh, but his family, his loved ones, and just South Africans who are horrified by racism, because that's exactly what it is. It is indeed. Good afternoon. It's a tragic statement about how far we still are from coming to terms with the fact that to be human is to respect yourself, respect others, because as the Archbishop himself said, I am because you are. When you insult people, you are in fact insulting yourself. And so in a sense, the person or persons who did the job of defacing the Archbishop's mural, they are simply letting us know that they are not yet fully human as they ought to be and respectful of themselves. It's like people who take money from grandmothers, people who steal money from the public purse, when you do harm to others, it is a reflection that all is not well within you. Mm. And you remember when we became free in 1994 and we adopted our constitution in 1996, we recognize that we come from a past where we were not always encouraged to think of ourselves as interdependent and interconnected to others, regardless of whether they were, what color they were, what shape of hair, or whether they were men or women, they were people. And as mm. people, they represent that divinity that's in all of us. Yeah. How do we deal with that, Dr. Rampele? Because this tells us something about our race relations in this country at the moment. And it tells us a lot about the work that still needs to be done. But often we've heard the other side doing most of the work. What do we need to do to ensure that everybody is committed and makes the same commitment to do the work of learning, of unlearning, of recognizing the contributions of the people that have fought for this country, of, of appreciating and acknowledging equality despite of the people's race? Well, first of all, we need, and this is what we said in the Constitution in 1996, that we will actively heal our broken society, our wounded society. Our government, and now we have a president, President Ramaphosa comes from the same tradition I come from, the Black Consciousness Movement, where we learned that there is only one race, the human race. And our job is to help everybody, starting with the self, to come to terms with the fact that this misguided notion of races, we have to put aside. God created one human race. Second, we, this commitment to heal ourselves should be reflected in the school system, we have life orientation, which is a space in our curriculum in the school system where we ought to be helping our children, the teachers and everybody to recognize this essential unity of humanity and the need to respect other human beings if we are to live in the way in which nature requires us to live in harmony. The third thing is when we accepted that constitution. We also said we will do the work, invest in embedding the values of human rights, Ubuntu, into everything we do. 
the private sector has personal development programs that do not focus on this. Our public sector, when they uh, initiate or, or orientate young people who are coming into the public service, they should be doing this work of healing, this embedding of the values of Ubuntu, then we would be in a better shape. The churches are failing in their duty of being the salt of the earth, the light of the, by making sure their congregants understand that we are all creatures of the great one. And therefore we are all children of God. We should treat one another mm. as equals. We should respect the dignity of everybody. How much of that one human race, Dr. Rampele, is reflected um, in our society? How much of it is reflected in our economy? Um, how much of it is reflected in our school system? Because whether we like it or not, when you look at a lot of aspects of our lives, you do see black and white still, 27 years later. This is a failure of our governments. Successive governments from 1994 failed to create an environment in which we as South Africans would see ourselves as one. The misguided view that you use color coding in the pursuit of so-called black economic empowerment has derailed us because now we have given value to the color of somebody's skin. Instead of saying the majority of people in this country who are poor, who require empowerment are black people. So all you do is to do the work of empowerment by transforming the, the cities like Cape Town so that we don't have black people living in in Kayalicha and elsewhere. Meanwhile, you and I who have got some education can buy ourselves into Bishop's Court or Kempsey. Mm. Our socioeconomic development model is not working, has not worked, and our government needs to recognize that and yeah. go back to the drawing board to make sure that we have an inclusive approach and that requires dismantling privilege which comes in color code. Yeah. Has the Archbishop seen the painting and what's been his response? No, the Archbishop is an elderly uh, father of ours. We are protecting him from it because yeah. it will just be too devastating for him. Mm. But the fact of the matter is, at some stage or other, because he is sentient, he'll be, he'll be able to see this. So what is important is for us as citizens of this country, starting with the church, which has gone asleep since people like him, who were the voices, the prophetic voices, were very clear on these issues. We need to hear more of the young church leaders across the spectrum saying no to this defacing and demeaning of human dignity. It just happens to be the Archbishop, but countless millions of South Africans are still being demeaned simply because of the color of their skins. Yeah. Women are still being demeaned because they're women. Poor people are still being demeaned because they're poor. So the issue is not the archbishop. The archbishop happens to be the uh, face of this current uh, demeaning. The fact of the matter is we as South Africans, starting with our government, our churches, the private sector, have to recommit to making racism, sexism, and yeah. all this exclusion of people history. And yeah. that requires work. It starts mm -hmm. with you and I. Mm -hmm. We must look at how we behave and how we treat other people. Yeah, and the work of learning and unlearning. We, all of us have to make a commitment, both black and white, uh, government and opposition parties. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Dr. Mampele Rampele is the acting chairperson of the Archbishop Desmond Tutu Intellectual Property Trust.